Are you trying to set up content types for the first time? This video is for you. In my last video, I talked about what content types are, how they're best used, and what the ultimate goal is. If you haven't seen that, catch up by clicking the link right there. In this video, we're going to go through the process and create some content types, apply them to a library so we can see everything in action. So what I've got here is just a sample site. It's a communication site. Um, doesn't really matter that much what template it is, but we're going to go through the process. What you need to do first, and you might already be familiar with this, you might not, but go up to the gear icon and you're going to go to site contents. There's a couple of other ways to get to it, but this will work fine. Click on site settings up in the top right corner. In the web designer galleries, you're going to see the site columns and the site content types. You can add the site columns by themselves first, then add them to a content type. What I prefer to do is just go straight into content types. So in the content type gallery, as you saw in the previous video, there's all the content types that are already in the system. In this case, it was when the site was created. It's just all the built-in content types. So to create a new one, we're going to click on create content type. Uh, we'll call this one presentation. So we're going to be building a document library that contains presentations, manuals, maybe just, you know, anything else that we could think of. But we want to, you know, break out those particular content types to keep them, you know, better organized. So we're going to call this presentation. It'll ask you for the, for the category. Where does this need to get filed? It'll default to custom content types. And that'll be fine for our purpose. Uh, the next thing is, what is the parent content type? So we're going to be basing this off of an existing content type, whether that's something like item for list items or document or a particular type of document. Maybe you're going to create a different type of page. So you have different types of SharePoint pages. So we're going to be basing this one off of a document content type because I would imagine this would be like a PowerPoint presentation. So for the content, we're going to base this off of document. So we're going to click on create here. And so here's our bare content type. It gives us one option, title, already there. So what we need to do is we're going to add in an additional column. Uh, notice here it'll let you create a brand new site column or pick an existing one if you've already created those in the site columns section of site settings. So I'd like to create them all here, so I'm going to create a new site column. We'll call this one topic. So the topic of the presentation, just so maybe users can find or, or organize their presentations by topic. Again, uh, category, we're going to be just sticking with the default custom columns uh, to kind of keep everything, you know, a little more separated from the, uh, the core and the system type uh, categories. For the field type, if you look, you've got the same types of fields uh, that you would creating columns in the list and library. So this one I will leave as a single line of text. We could look at more options. Maybe I want this to be required that there is some sort of a topic. Uh, if you're giving a presentation, there's probably going to be a topic. So we're going to have that required. And I think that'll be all we need. We're going to click on Save. And there is our new topic site column for our custom content type. So you can continue adding more fields. But what I'm going to do is go back to the content type gallery and create my next content type. This one I'll just call manual. Uh, maybe we're storing product manuals in this, uh, in this document library. I, I've kind of envisioned it's, you know, some sort of a departmental document library. So this will kind of identify all the different manuals that we have so we can quickly find those if we need to. Again, put this in the custom content types category. Again, we're going to base this off of document types and document. So we'll click create. And we're going to add a column for, uh, let's call it product. Um, because the manual is going to be based on some sort of a product. So make this one required as well. 
And all of that looks good. We'll click save. And there we have it. We've got our two custom content types created, ready to apply to a library. If you're getting value from this video, please do me a favor and click that like button. So let's go next to site contents and let's create a new library to house these. So we're in site contents. Now we're going to create a new document library. Um, we'll call this team files. No, we'll call this department files. And what I want to do, I don't like spaces in the URL, so we're going to create this without the space. And then we're going to go into library settings because we have to go to library settings anyway to add the content types. We'll go in here and we'll add the space back. That way the URL stays clean and we have a nice looking title. Once we're here, the next step we have to go is to go into advanced settings. We need to turn on the ability to add content types. If you notice, all we can do here is really just add columns. There's no option to do anything with content types until we enable that feature. So for that, we're going to go into advanced settings. And the very first option is what we're looking for. Allow management of content types. Now this is going to let us add and remove content types to our library. All we need to do right now is just click yes on this and then just hit okay. And now we've got a new section for content types and it's already got the default one in there for just the generic document. This will be kind of our catch all. So I think we'll leave document in here and we'll just add our two new ones. So if you're adding something that's not a presentation and it's not a manual, then it would just default to document. To add new content types, what we're gonna do is click on the add from existing content types button. We'll go to custom content types and we see our two new types right here. So we'll just click on each one of them and add them and click OK when we're done. And there we are. We have three content types now. Um, you notice it'll, it'll let you pick which uh, should be visible on the new button. So when someone clicks on new, which ones should be allowed to show up. So you may want to hide some. Uh, and then the default content type. By default, if you just drag and drop a document on, onto the library, what is that content type going to be? And we'll see that in action because we're gonna drag a document on here and see what happens and go through the process of, of switching that. So we've got our content types added. As I mentioned in my last video, if you scroll down, you will see that our new fields that were on the content types have been added. We have product here, and it shows that it's used in the manual content type. We've got topic that's used on presentation. So if we go back up to department files, we are ready to start trying out these features. If you look on the new button, we see our content types. Now, the, one of the issues is presentations are going to be PowerPoint files. That's, you know, kind of what I've already envisioned for this. So we don't need a word icon up there. We really need a PowerPoint icon. So how do we get this? Well, what we need to do is we need to go back to library settings. For presentations, we can click on this. And this will take us to the instance of the content type that's been applied to the library. A again, think of a hierarchy uh, with how these are being applied. But if we change it at this level, it'll apply it just to our document library. And I think for, that for this demonstration, I think that's what we want to do. We're just going to update this library. For that, we're going to go to Advanced Settings, and we're going to pick the PowerPoint template. Just a normal PowerPoint file, and then we're going to click OK. So now our presentation content type has a default template. Let's see how that looks. We're going to go back to Department Files, and we're going to check the new button. Now that looks better. So now that we're here, 
let's go through the process of creating a new presentation. So we're going to click on the link. And it takes us into the PowerPoint. So we'll type in a little bit of text. This is a test of content types. And then don't forget to give it a good name. And that'll be good. So with that, we'll go back to SharePoint. It's still showing the default name, so we'll just give it a refresh. And there's a new file. Now, if you notice, it's saying that there's a problem. We're, we're missing required information. And we know we've got a custom field on there. So if we click on this and go to the info panel, then we'll see our topic. There's our custom field. Uh, so for the topic of this, I'll put in SharePoint. All right, now that that's done, the other thing I wanted to demonstrate is uploading a file. Let's say we've got that manual somewhere, and we're going to upload our manual. So I've got a test file that we'll use as our manual. I'm uploading it. And here's our new file. Over on the info panel, you will see that it defaulted to that document content type. And this is going to be a manual. So we're going to change this, and you'll see our other content types here. We'll change it to manual, and you'll see our new product field here. So here's where we can start really utilizing those custom fields for our custom content types. And for this, it was a manual for product X. So for the product, I'll just put in product X. So we've got our two files here. We need to kind of see those custom fields, in my opinion. So let's edit the view. And let's add in product and topic. So you see we could have both fields on here, even though they're only applying to one particular content type. And you see that they only put in the information needed for that content type. So you have two content types sitting side by side on here, and everything's working fine. Taking this one step further, what we really want to do is have new views created so that people can go just see the manuals, just see the presentations. So let's create some new views. So we've got our manuals. Let's go edit this and add a filter. For the filter, we're just going to specify the content type and then just set it equal to manual. All right, that's done. Let's make a copy of this. Call this presentations. And let's update the filter. We'll set that equal to presentation. So we've got views set up to show our new custom content types. Users can click between them and find what they need to find. They can still go back to all documents and they can see everything. And that's all there is to it. I hope this has been useful and that you've learned something. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Check the videos above for more content, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.